Hello everyone. Uh, in the previous uh, part of the lecture, we had given some of the motivating background of studying calculus of variations and we had uh, discussed uh, certain dangers or uh, certain initial temptations one may have in proceeding with uh, minimizations or maximizations in general extremization of uh, integrations and we had uh, and the and the point where we had left off in the in the previous lecture was that we wanted to uh, go back to the basics of how we arrive at the method of minimizing or maximizing a simple function as we used to do in differential calculus so we go back we want to go back uh, beyond the algorithmic way which we all which we are all familiar with and uh, take a relook at the method of which led to that algorithm of finding the minimization or maximization of functions so uh, with the with the motivation that we'll be able to export the same kind of idea to what we require uh, for integrations okay so uh, the topic we want to explore here is extremization of functions so basically what we are going to do here is uh, is effectively a a recap of what you learned in your high school okay so maybe in your plus 2 the extremization of functions so we consider a function y is equal to f of x and we say that uh, uh, like if we understand how to do minimization the same kind of thing will be applicable for maximization uh, in general for extremization so we say that uh, suppose uh, suppose uh, suppose f of x uh, is it takes on a minimum value at x equal to a so uh, what is the basic method behind the algorithm uh, behind the algorithm of saying that f dash x is equal to 0 at x equal to a and then to say that f double dash of x is greater than 0 at x equal to a for uh, f of x to be minimum at x equal to a we know that we know what to do with that with the, with the derivations the, the know the method but what is the motivation behind that method okay to understand that what we are going to do is we are going to tailor expand this okay so this f of x we are going to tailor expand like this about the point of concern which is x equal to a So when I write f dash a, what I basically mean is that I am doing df dx and then evaluating it at x equal to a. I, I hope uh, nobody will face a problem with this notation. Proceeding further, we have x minus a whole square divided by factorial 2, then second derivative. And then we have higher order derivatives. Okay, now uh, if uh, indeed our x equal to a is a point of minimum, then this value f of a, uh, it should be smaller than any of its neighboring values, which means that f of x minus f of a should be greater than 0 there should not be any doubt about it okay so what I am saying is that since f of a is a minimum anything else must be greater than 0 and anything else must be greater than it so f of x minus f of a must be greater than 0 now you look at it this term see this is uh, what we have here is x minus a 
Now, depending on where our x is, it could be either to the left of a or to the right of a. This x minus a by itself, it can take on a positive value sometimes, it can take on a negative value sometimes. Now, we do not want this kind of a variability, variability of the value of x minus a to influence this value of f of x minus f of a this is please note that this is what we require okay this is what we need this is what we need to ensure and just now what we said is that depending on where x is located x minus a can be positive or negative now please note that since this uh, if you are if you are really interested in the points which are very close by a then x minus a is a very small quantity and then you can understand that x minus a this value is going to dominate over x minus a whole square so overall uh, as long as we don't have very uh, high values of these derivatives f dash a f double dash a as long as that is not so so we can understand that uh, this term will be larger than this term so this term is going to dominate in value over this term so if this is sometimes positive and sometimes it is negative what is going to happen is that we are going to end up with a situation where f of x minus f of a is sometimes greater than 0 and sometimes smaller than 0 but that is some that is what we, what we don't need we don't need that rather we want to uh, ensure that f of x minus f of a is always greater than 0 so that it is actually ensured that f of a is a minimum so there is a very subtle logic going on here i hope all of you will be able to appreciate it if you just think about it for a minute okay so this the the thing that that uh, that is crucial here is to appreciate that depending on where x is located x minus a can be negative can be positive or negative and because if we take a uh, if you take a value of x which is very close to a uh, there is a very small value and then square of that very small value is even smaller so this term is going to dominate over this so overall this term itself is going to influence the sign of this f of x minus f of a so we have to ensure we have to ensure that this kind of a variable value of x minus a is not playing any spoil sport how can we ensure that we can ensure that by switching off its influence as as simple and straightforward as that okay so We want to ensure that this variable sign of x minus a does not influence f of x minus f of a it's a very very subtle logic here okay and how can we ensure that so we ensure that by requiring that f dash a is equal to zero so the trick is that if you switch off this thing we cannot switch off the value of x minus a it is going to have some value but we can require something on this so if we require that f dash a is equal to zero overall this variable sign of x minus a is not going to influence f of x minus f of a so job is done and you note that this exactly is the kind of first step in our algorithm of finding the extremum values of functions 
This is what we do always. We first always find the first derivative and set it equal to zero. Okay, so this is the this is the fundamental motivation from where it comes from. Okay, so I'm sure all of you know this, but it is good to recap it uh, again. Next, uh, once we have ensured that uh, so this is this is what we say is the necessary condition. Okay, this is the necessary condition for minimum or maximum. Okay, the same kind of argument would follow for maximization. So this is the necessary condition. Next, uh, to actually ensure, uh, next, to ensure that f of x minus f of a is indeed greater than zero, and this is very easy to see. You see, you you can you can note here that x minus a whole square. That is a positive thing. This factorial two is of course positive. So all we have to do is to say that f double dash a that has to be greater than zero. We just require that. Okay, uh, now as it turns out, and we are not going to delve into it, this is only a sufficient condition, it's not a necessary condition. Uh, if you want to uh, delve more into it, you should go back and take a look at your high school math books, uh, the, your, your preliminary calculus books. You'll understand why this is only a sufficient condition, not a necessary condition. Uh, okay, so the subtle logic is present here. Okay, and this is what we what we want to, this this is the logic which we want to uh, export to our uh, to our idea of developing the method of extremization of those integrations that we were talking about in the previous lecture. Okay, so uh, let me write this down here. We are going to export this idea. this idea so, extremization of the integrations okay and that we'll do in the next part of the lecture thank you very much